What's good y'all, Akil here back with another video and today I'm going to show you guys just some snippets from one of my previous live shows and I do these live shows every Thursday 6pm Mountain Standard Time so of course I'll be hopping on live later on today and for me that's usually just like office hours. I stay on there just for about an hour and I answer any reseller or entrepreneur questions that you guys may have and it's really just my time to chop it up with you guys so if you guys are interested in that definitely check in later today at 6 o'clock and I've been staying pretty consistent with it so I'm definitely happy about that. I think it's either week eight or week nine so i'll continue doing it as long as you guys are gaining some value from some of these videos and also i just wanted to thank everybody for supporting the consistency shirts i've even sold out of some sizes already so i definitely do appreciate the support and i'm going to be restocking some of those sizes pretty soon especially since people are definitely starting to support it so i really do appreciate it and without further ado let's get into it what's up akil have you ever have you ever purchased items from Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Ross, and returned them within 30-day period because you did not make a sale? I've done that a couple of times only with items that say I purchased it and at that point in time they were selling for like 100 bucks. And now 20 days later, 3 weeks later, now they're selling for 40. I'm definitely returning that item cuz chances are I probably paid 40 bucks for that item. And a lot of times when you're dealing with Ross items or any type of retail arbitrage, it's usually a race to the bottom. So anytime I come across an item that's just completely tanked, I might return it, but I try my best. Like I really try my best not to return items only because I go to these stores every day and I don't want to be that guy that they know for always returning stuff. And because when I go to stores, sometimes I might buy maybe 50, 60 pairs of shoes. And in Ross, I don't usually get that much items, but in Ross, I might buy 10 pairs. And, you know, if I return one, that's cool, but I don't want to be that person constantly returning items. So I try my best not to return, but it happens. It definitely happens. I just try not to make a habit of it because even in the Nike outlet, I, I would overhear the workers saying, oh, uh, this guy always returns or he's a reseller. Don't don't give him any help. Like you hear people talk like that. And, you know, sometimes people just don't like resellers. They hate the fact that we're buying stuff and flipping it and making money. So when it comes to the return thing, I, for so many reasons, I just try not to do it. Uh, do you have any regrets from when you first started reselling? That's a very good question. Hmm. Only thing I regret is not like starting YouTube faster. Like I should have jumped on YouTube early on. I was one of those people I used to like watch other people's videos and like comment on their stuff, but I never really like was active with it. So I feel I feel like I kind of missed I missed out on the opportunity by not starting like starting out when I was like really fresh and really green and really figuring things out. I waited until I was more comfortable with what I was doing and more comfortable with my overall business model before I presented it. And I wish I just kind of hopped out there and just showed you guys all the mistakes because I think it's best to show people both sides. It's important to inspire people and motivate people and show them, you know, once you, when you make a thousand dollars a day in sales, it's important to show people that because it gives people hope. But it's also good to show people when you make mistakes and when you mess up and you keep it pushing. And I didn't show enough of that in the beginning. So I try to do it now. I try to show you guys the ups and the downs, but that's the one thing I, I, I do regret. Uh, let's see. Do you have to be registered as a business in order to be able to expense materials used as a part time as a just as a part time? No, you can actually you can write you can make write offs as a sole proprietor my first year my very first year i was, I was a sole proprietor and i had a ton of write offs every um expense you can think of whether it's your phone bill whether it's the space in your apartment that you use to hold inventory whether you have an office your cell phone bill gas anything you can think of that would call that would uh occur as a tax write-off i was able to to use that the difference is once you become, once you have a, a S corp or an LLC or anything like that, your taxes are completely separated. So you have the personal taxes you need to take care of, as well as your business taxes. And it's important to get, you know, some type of designation at one at some point or another, because especially depending on your state. When I was living in California, I think the the taxes was like 37, 38 percent. So once you hit a certain threshold, you will get taxed like crazy. So for me, I decided to get an S corp that way, even if I'm doing 300, $400,000 in sales, I'd still separate the business from the personal and I wouldn't be taxed and penalized as heavily. So uh, if you're trying to go to three to five stores a day, what do you think is the proper time to spend in each store? Uh, three to five stores a day. Um, it depends on the size of the store, of course. 
But if you're selling clothing and shoes, it shouldn't take you too long to run through uh, the men's section, you know, check through the shoes. When I was doing three to five stores a day, I usually do maybe 25 to 30 minutes per store. So it's like a shuffle and I'm really trying to maximize my time. Now, if I come across something I need to spend more time with, cool. But the goal is not to stay longer than 30 minutes in the store because you don't want to waste too much time. You want to make sure that you're in and out. And that's always tell people you want to be in shape. Like if you're an entrepreneur, you're a reseller, you want to be in shape because it, it gets hard for you to, you know, run around and do all these different type of things and go to these stores and carry these bags and all these type of stuff. So you definitely want to take care of yourself. I know a lot of people don't necessarily talk about that because the older we get, we make excuses. But I'm about to be 31 this year. And I know it's like it's in, it's imperative that you stay healthy, you stay in shape because three to five stores every single day is taxing. And if you're not in shape after that third store, you're going to say, you know what, I'm good. I'm not going. But if you're in shape and you're healthy and you're eating right, you might hit up seven, eight stores in a day. And then you really start seeing some productivity. So just keep that in mind, bro. So why do you use Pirate Ship of said, instead of printing the shipping label using eBay's portal? Is Pirate Ship much cheaper? Uh, yeah, so Pirate Ship is much cheaper depending on the, the item. So first class items, that usually you're not going to see much of a change in terms of price. But sometimes when when I have like a very heavy or like a kind of weird shape item and I need to put it in a large box, depending on the dimensions and the weight, you can ship something and the location. Those three things, dimensions, the weight and the location. If you're shipping something on the East Coast, you can find yourself spending 25 bucks on us on any certain item just in shipping. But with Pirate Ship, I've been using it for maybe four or five months now. And regardless whether it's East Coast, West Coast, I've never spent more than $9.56 on shipping. And this is coming from someone that used to use large flat rate boxes. That was like $16. Medium flat rate boxes, that's $13 plus. I thought I was saving money by using regional A boxes. And even that is $10.80, depending on where, where it's going. So for me, I just realized that I was saving so much more money using pirate ship. The only downside is that it needs to be that whatever item you're using needs to be in a bag. So you have to keep like large poly bags on deck to, in order to put those items in it. But outside of that, you'll save a ton of money. Uh, sorry, I remember you saying before you weren't planning on reselling forever. That's why I'm wondering your viewpoint on reselling in the future, clothing especially. Um, yeah, I'm not, I definitely wouldn't see myself being a full time reseller forever only because I'm interested in different stuff, different opportunities. And I just like switching things up. So after a certain point in time, I'm sure I would scale back on the amount of reselling I'm doing. But of course, I'll probably still resell to on a very small scale, probably forever, just because I enjoy it. Finding something for a little bit of money and then flipping it for more. That's always dope to me that I don't think I'll be doing it on this large of a scale. Now, when it comes to selling clothing at scale, I feel like that's not I don't I don't see that being in my future only because I've seen the pendulum swing to where I had to make a pivot in terms of um, my sourcing, uh, my sourcing skills and just trying to figure out how to what I'm going to sell. And I just realized that the longer I've been doing it, clothing has just been slowly just dropping in terms of overall interest, in terms of uh, the ROI and especially used clothing. Now with the virus going on, a lot of people aren't necessarily interested in purchasing used items. And unless you're not unless you're selling really strong brands, selling used clothing is tough because there's so much clothes, there's so much stores that have brand new tags items and they're selling them so cheap that it makes it tough. So for me, I just don't see myself um, really sticking with selling clothing and stuff like that forever. But for some people, it's working. So if it works, do what it do. Do what works best for you. Stop with the, stop with the, and give me the strong. Hey, hey, let's go. First back in the day, and so I can't complain. For all the times I pray, carnivores don't come take. Uh, Cause it's poppin' a pop of tunis, I can't salute it. They raising red flags instead of raising solutions. I'm trying to do what's best for me. Okay, right hands on the wall because it's destiny. First time I own with right hand, man, ain't nothing left for me. I left them, see, you can't hold me back like elementary. What's meant for me? 